Today's video is sponsored by Ravensburger. In just a couple of weeks, I am going to Spain for the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. And there are 10 things that I am doing to prepare. And trust me, some of these are about to get real weird and real specific. As a quick disclaimer, I have not been to Worlds before, but I have been to a lot of jigsaw puzzle competitions. And also I am being sponsored by Ravensburger to go to Worlds. Um, they're paying for my travel and they're gonna sponsor the recap videos that I'm doing. So I'm gonna talk more about that at the end of the video. Okay, so obviously you should be practicing your speed puzzling, but I feel like that one is so obvious it doesn't even have to be on the list. And also not everyone has 45, 60, 75 minutes every day to carve out just to practice speed puzzling. So instead, what you can do are puzzle drills. So instead of doing the full puzzle, you can time yourself literally just turning pieces over, see how fast you can get them all spread out. You can also practice literally just pulling out the edges. And you can practice maneuvering pieces in your hands. Like sometimes you pick up a piece and it actually goes into the puzzle the other way around. So literally like while you're watching TV, you can just be playing with puzzle pieces in your hands. And then another fun exercise is that you can pick out a random piece and then see how quickly you can spot where it goes in the puzzle. And this works the best for a puzzle with a fairly busy image. And then if you wanna work on your color vision, the apps I Love Hue and I Love Hue 2 are perfect for this. You're literally just putting pieces in order, trying to find the slightest, slightest difference. I have beat both apps all the way through, and now I'm working my way through them for the second time. <laughs> So this next one is kind of related, but a very specific thing to practice is literally just opening the puzzle. We have all seen how this is not my strong suit, <laughs> but shrink wrapped Ravensburgers are so valuable to speed puzzlers because like obviously we can pass these back and forth and I'll practice with them, but you can only take the shrink wrap off once. So I'm gonna share a little trick that I learned from other speed puzzlers. If you look at the back of Ravensburger shrink wrap, you can see all of these little holes making this perforation. So instead of like shoving your fingernail in there and then slowly kind of ripping off the plastic, what you can do is you can hug the puzzle and then put your hands across it like this and then you're just gonna pull really quickly and the whole thing should just come off. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God, that worked. <laughs> Oh 
Okay, well, that wasn't the most graceful, and I ended up ah, with one, two, three pieces on the floor. That was 26 seconds from bag to pieces out on the table. That could definitely be improved. So next, I am putting on the detective hat because I want to know if we can predict which puzzles they might be choosing for the competition. So the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation has results for all of these competitions on their website. So what I did was I pulled every single puzzle used in all of those competitions. Last year, all of the puzzles used for the qualifying rounds were just regular Ravensburger puzzles. And then the puzzles used for the final rounds were unreleased images from the following year's catalog. However, since then, Ravensburger has also launched their custom puzzle service that was used at nationals and also the regional competition that I was just at. So this video is literally sponsored by Ravensburger. I could ask them sort of what puzzles are in the running, like what categories of puzzles are in the running, if they think they're gonna use the custom service or not. But I have not asked them any of that. I feel like if I ask even one single question about which puzzles are gonna be used, it would look so suspicious. So I'm only going off of publicly available information. Okay, so when I went through all of the puzzles from previous years, I separated them into a couple different categories. We have the colorful rainbow puzzles where the color is really like the main selling point here. Similarly, we have a color block photograph where there's still a separation of colors, but it's like a scenic photo. Then we have the regular nature photograph. There was only one single animal photograph used in all of these competitions. I was surprised by that. Then we have the graphic illustration, and this can either be super color blocky or it can be very detailed. Then we've got the the animal illustration. And then we have the busy illustration. And these might have animals in them, but a single animal is not the main focal point. Then we've got a sketch illustration, which has more of a hand-drawn texture. Then we've got the fantastical illustration, which has more kind of gradients and smooth textures. And finally, there was only one single collage used in all of these competitions. So in this year's competition, they're gonna be using 12 500 piece puzzles and 11 1000 piece puzzles. So what I did was I looked at every single puzzle that is currently available on Ravensburger's website and on their Amazon storefront. And I obviously excluded puzzles from past competitions and I also excluded Christmas puzzles. Because here's my thinking. Ravensburger isn't just sponsoring this event for the fun of it. Like, this is a big advertising opportunity for them. So I feel like at least some of the puzzles that they choose have to be currently available for their American customers to go out and buy. So, okay, they have released a lot of these 500 piece puzzles with the larger pieces. I have never seen those used in one of these big competitions. So I'm just gonna tentatively eliminate all of those. So this Circle of Colors series is one that they've really been pushing lately. Um, they just did one at a game conference called Origins, where they had an official Ravensburger sponsored puzzle contest. I could really see them using three of these for all of the pairs semifinals, and then all three of them would be a very similar level of difficulty. Uh, the biggest category that I pulled in 500 piece puzzles is animal illustrations. I think we can definitely expect to see at least one of these. Of the 500s currently available here in America, 
it was very light on the nature and the scenic photos, which I was surprised by. Um, we haven't seen a collage image used since Worlds in 2019, so I could definitely see them pulling out one of these just to change it up a little. And then these are more just general illustrations. I think all of these are also really good candidates. So for the thousands, there were a few too many for me to pull literally all of them, but they've really been pushing the Dean McAdams puzzles lately. Um, we did one of them at Nationals, Dean himself was there at Nationals to talk about them. So I could definitely see them pulling out another one from him to feature on such a big stage. And then here are some just regular inoffensive illustrations currently available on Amazon. I think any of these would work great. And then I also pulled some with something a little funkier going on in the layout. Um, I would be really excited to see any of these. I think they all look really fun. Okay, so I personally have a secret way that we may be able to eliminate a couple puzzles. So Ravensburger set up this landing page where you can use promo code 20worlds for 20% 20 off any of these puzzles. And I feel like they are so careful not to leak which puzzles are gonna be used in the competition that we can probably eliminate all of these puzzles, unless they expected us to think that and they're gonna pull a little switcheroo, and they actually are gonna use one of those puzzles, unless we now know that they know that we know they probably won't use the puzzles, and so they're not gonna use the puzzles, but if they know that we know that they know that we know, then maybe they will use the puzzles, but if we know that they know that we know that they know that we know. Okay, maybe this one is not foolproof. <laughs> But you can still go use that promo code if you want to pick up any of those puzzles. <laughs> okay, all of that was a very long-winded way of saying that you should be practicing a variety of puzzles from all of those categories I mentioned, because we really do not know which images they're going to pick. All right, so if you're practicing at home, you're going to want to mimic as much of the exact environment as you can from the real competition. So I moved out to the living room where I have natural light, just like we're gonna have natural light coming in through the dome. They put the exact table size on the website. So what I did was I marked off on my puzzle board exactly the amount of space that I'll be able to have. And then if you really want to go the extra mile, you can get your friends and family to be over here like filming you while you puzzle so that you can get used to the live stream cameras like being in your face. <laughs> Maybe that's my main advantage here is that I am very used to puzzling on camera. <laughs> So, okay, when you're practicing at home, this is the time to try all kinds of different puzzling styles. You can go back into the live streams from last year and really look at what all of the fastest puzzlers are really doing. I noticed one thing that Alejandro does is he'll hold multiple pieces in his hands and then he can just quickly put them in instead of reaching back and forth multiple times which is gonna add some extra time. And then of course, there is Kristen's style where she pretty much puzzles with one hand. She does a very detailed sort and she does the edge last. So I'm really curious. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try it. <laughs>
Okay, so my time was 57.12, which puts me 20 minutes slower than Kristen. So clearly every puzzling style is not meant for every person, but I think this was a really good exercise in learning to be calm and deliberate when putting in pieces and not being quite so frantic and all over the place. Also, I'm like extra, extra impressed by Kristen right now. How did she shave 20 minutes off of that? That is crazy. All right, so I really think this next one might be the most valuable thing that you can do to practice speed puzzling, and that is comparing your time to other puzzlers. You know, without anyone else's time, you don't really have a barometer for how fast or slow you were going. You're just kind of doing it out into the wind. <laughs> so I'm going to share three places where you can get puzzle times. The first, as I said before, is the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation's website. And then there is also a Spanish site called AE Puzz, and they have uh, tons of results here on this page. And then this is where you can get the most results all in one place, the speedpuzzling.com results page. You can go through, click on every single one of these and just get times for how fast the fastest American puzzlers are doing these puzzles. And this one is all kinds of different brands, not just Ravensburgers. I personally think that the ranking for the most valuable practice goes, number one, in-person competitions. Like there's just, you can't replicate the adrenaline and the feeling of all being in the same room together. Number two is an online competition over Zoom. Again, it just ramps up the adrenaline when you're all doing the puzzle all at the same time. And then third is practicing at home just on your own. Uh, just make sure that you don't have any kids or parents or partners or anyone else coming in to interrupt you. So speaking of other puzzlers, did you know that the entire participant list is up on the website right now? You can go in and you can see exactly who the biggest competition is going to be. Of course, Alejandro is going again. He completely dominated last year. I would not be surprised if he won again this year. Ooh, it looks like Kristen is going. And she's doing teams as well this year, so I'm going to be really curious to see how her strategy translates when you have multiple people all working on the puzzle together. And Teresa from the Czech Republic is going again. She got third place last year. Definitely super fast, someone to watch out for. From the US, uh, the Golden State Puzzlers are going again. Oh my god, this I'm so excited for. The Reuter sisters are going. You might remember at Nationals, they just completely decimated everyone in the pairs category. And they are doing individual and pairs and teams. I honestly think they might win the pairs competition. I'm just putting that out there now. <laughs> and then the question that I probably get asked most often when I tell people that I'm going to this thing is, how do I think I'm going to place? And I just know that everyone wants me to say that I think I'm going to win. But I can tell you right now, I am not going to win. There are so many people going who I just know are objectively faster puzzlers than I am. And I'm sure there are people going who are faster than me who I don't even know about yet. But I am going to answer the question. So here is what I would be happy with. I would be thrilled if I got top 30 in individual. We're going to cut that in half, so top 15 for pairs. And then maybe top five or six for teams. <laughs> That's the one where I think we really have the best shot at placing a little higher up. So in addition to practicing puzzling, you also need to make sure that your body is physically ready. 
because after leaning over a table, working on a puzzle for hours on end, trust me, we are all going to be hurting. Now I am a total hypocrite here. I have not worked out in ages, <laughs> but a while ago, I actually made a video about a jigsaw puzzle workout. So you can do a puzzle while planking. You can put in a piece after every sit up. You can sort pieces while doing a wall sit. You can put in a piece after every shoulder press. Honestly, I find it so hard to stick to a workout routine. I might have to actually do the puzzling workout and maybe that's the thing that'll keep me interested in it. <laughs> Okay, so we have practiced puzzling, we've exercised our body, now it is time to start packing. So what are we bringing? Well, first off, what are we not bringing? You are not allowed to bring your own lighting, so no flashlights, no headlamps. You also can't bring cutting tools, so I'm gonna leave my scissors at home. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Breaking news, I am just now hearing that cutting tools are allowed. So apparently some of the newer Ravensburger boxes use stickers to hold the boxes shut rather than shrink wrap. And at Origins, uh, some people had issues getting into the box with just their hands. So the new rule says that letter openers, keys, and other blunt objects are allowed, but no scissors or box cutters because that could get dangerous. So, okay, everyone add this to your list. Like, I need to go figure out what I'm gonna use. But you can bring your own timer. Uh, some people use an iPad since the numbers are gonna be a lot bigger. I also, last year, saw a handful of people using these box stands. So I think that's fine if you wanna bring one. You are allowed to bring headphones and you can listen to whatever you want. Oh, of course, trays. So there is a very specific um, size that the trays are allowed to be for every single event. Uh, this is something that's actually still on my list. My team has not quite figured out our tray situation yet. <laughs> But since they eliminated the 1500 piece puzzles from the team rounds, I feel like trays aren't quite as necessary. Like you saw when we were doing all the thousands on our practice day, we never used trays and it was totally fine. It's really only when you get up to 1500 that they become totally necessary because that's just way too many pieces for the size table that you get. Okay, you're definitely gonna want a water bottle not to use during the actual competition, but just to stay hydrated um, afterwards. And I say that because there are no official bathroom breaks. This year, the longest event is only three hours long, so you're not gonna get that dehydrated. <laughs> but I mean, there is gonna be a lot of puzzle dust floating around. You don't wanna get distracted from your puzzle by having a long coughing fit. So just have water nearby and then after the event is over, like drink a whole lot of water. And similarly, um, you'll want snacks like protein bars or anything easy to eat. Again, not for during the competition, but for in between to keep your energy up. Okay, and then a few more updates. Table risers are officially not allowed. And in order to keep the aisleways clear for camera people and time checkers, if you're gonna be filming yourself, um, you should bring a phone stand that clamps right onto the table or a little one that'll just sit right on the table instead of an actual tripod, which might get in the way. 
but what are we going to wear? Okay, this is my favorite part of the video, um, the puzzle fashion. So we debuted our team shirts in my last video and it is not required that your team all matches. However, it's fun and it's encouraged. Also, selfishly, as the person who is gonna be editing these recaps, it is easier for me to quickly identify each team if they're all wearing the same color. So we each got two shirts so that we can wear a fresh one for each team's event. You don't wanna be smelly and distracting your other participants. Oh, and then look at this. I think I might pull this out for the individual event. I just got this puzzle sweater vest. It's originally from Zara. I got it on Depop. How cute is that? <laughs> I haven't quite finished all of my outfits yet, but I'm literally gonna be like trying everything on, doing practice puzzles in them, knowing exactly what I'm going to be wearing every single day of the competition. In general, you just wanna be as comfortable as possible. You don't want your clothes to restrict any of your movements. Like if you have to reach all the way across the table for a puzzle piece. If you have long sleeves on, make sure that they are tight to the wrist and not like loose and flowing because that is just gonna knock puzzle pieces off the table. And you're definitely gonna want comfort comfortable and supportive shoes. Especially if you are someone who stands while you puzzle, you could be standing for three hours straight and the floor is like a concrete material. So you're standing on a hard surface for hours at a time. And of course your hairstyle. Um, we all saw back before I got a haircut when my hair was just knocking pieces off the table. Um, now that it's shorter, that's not gonna be an issue. I'm probably just gonna do um, pigtails again, just to try to keep it off of my face. A lot of people do French braids or like a bun or yeah, whatever you feel comfortable in to just make sure it's not a distraction. Well, I think we're almost ready. The last thing to do is just to share this schedule with all of your friends and family so that they can watch along on the live stream. And here is the schedule in all of the US time zones if you want to take a screenshot for reference. There will be English commentary this year, and I'm gonna link the YouTube channel where it's going to be live streaming down in the description. Okay, I did quickly want to mention, and I feel a little weird bringing this up, but I did write up a couple guidelines for if you want to meet me at the event. I will be so happy to meet you and take a photo with you, just as long as you follow what I hope are kind of obvious requests. Oh my gosh, you know what would be so fun though? If we took a photo and we both did my thumbnail face. <laughs> that one I am totally on board with. And then before I go, I just wanna be totally clear about my Ravensburger sponsorship. They are sponsoring the competition and they are also sponsoring me to go to the competition. So that means that they're covering my travel, my camera person, and the sponsorship fee for the recap videos that I'm going to be making. However, I have no inside information about what puzzles they're gonna be choosing. I haven't seen next year's catalog. I haven't seen any unreleased images and I did not accept any free puzzles from them to practice with. Also, my teammates are not being sponsored by Ravensburger. They may have affiliations with other puzzle companies. So what does that mean for the prizes? So these are the prizes that are up for grabs. Everyone in the top 10 of each event is gonna get something. As I said, I do not think there is any chance of me getting top 10 in individual. If we get something in pairs or teams, I mean, I'll keep the trophy if we win a trophy, but I will give the money and the puzzles to my teammates. So I think that's it. 
Um, make sure to put the live stream dates in your calendar so you don't forget. Let me know down in the comments if you can think of anything else that I should be doing to prepare for this competition. Your code word for the comments will literally just be good luck because that's all I need to hear right now is good luck. Okay, I'm gonna go practice puzzling and pack my bag and stretch and try on my outfits. Oh my God, there's too much, there's too much to do.